the recording again. Yeah. Namaste. Welcome to another of our podcasts from the Career Counseling Center. Today we have with us Sanjana Batra, batch of 2006 from the Malshri campus. She's a fashion stylist and curator. So Sanjana, what do you do as a fashion stylist? Um, so as a stylist, my job basically entails um, in putting together looks, uh, but not designing those looks from scratch. So essentially what a fashion designer does is creates looks. They make the garments. Uh, that's not what a stylist does. What a stylist is hired to do usually is to pick out the best of what's out there and to kind of curate, you know, uh, what uh, curate a wardrobe or a selection for a certain project or a person, whatever it might be. So um, essentially you're kind of like, uh, always on the lookout for beautiful things that fit a brief of what you're working, you know, fit the brief of what you're working on or towards. Uh, but we don't essentially get into creating those, those looks or those pieces. So give me an example of what you do. Okay. So there are a few situations, like a few work situations I could be in. One could be styling an actor for a red carpet event. Uh, or, you know, a media related event in general. Now, in that case, um, you know, the client and I will have a chat, uh, he or she will tell me what they're looking at. And I kind of put together a mood board or a reference board in terms of the looks I have in mind for them. Uh, then we get into procuring those looks. So I will reach out to relevant brands, designers and kind of uh, write into them and tell them that I would like to use their looks on this person. Now with actors in specific, um, usually you get these looks on a returnable basis. It's not something I need to buy uh, because it's a, it's a sort of a barter between the, the brand and the actor where the, the brand gets publicity via the celebrity or the media personality I'm dressing. Um, so it's quite interesting and it's honestly just evolved. This, this has just come into being in the last couple of years, I would say, and it keeps evolving even now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it could be Indian designers, uh, of course, Indian designers, the established, the more upcoming ones, uh, you know, brands from across the world, upcoming designers from across the world. Uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes you have a unique idea which you kind of want to, you know, put together and you maybe collaborate with the designer and ask them to create that look for you. So that's also one of the options that, you know, one of the scenarios that happens. Um, I also style ad shoots. So with that, it's a little more, uh, it's a little different in terms of approach because there will be a very specific brief that the stylist will be given, sometimes as specific as color palette and exactly what the silhouette and cut of the outfit has to be. And again, my job is to go out there and procure what is closest to that. So that is what an ad shoot, um, you know, kind of entails. And over and above that, uh, there's personal styling. So you could be someone, you know, who is um, someone in the corporate sector or, you know, someone who just has no time to put together a wardrobe for themselves. Um, I mean, you don't need to necessarily only be from the, you know, world of glamour and fashion, like film. It could be anyone. There are people who reach out to me and say, look, I, I don't know, you know, I've, I've either had some kind of transformation in terms of my body. I want to change up my image or I don't know how to put looks together. I don't have time to do it. So in that case, then I will get an understanding of what the person is like, their likes, dislikes, uh, what they like wearing, what they don't like wearing, you know, where they live, uh, what their day-to-day -day life entails and kind of curate and put together a wardrobe for them. So yeah, that these are the various verticals within styling. Oh, great. That's, that's really, really nice to know. So when you do fashion styling, does it only include the wardrobe or does it also include the makeup and the cosmetics and all of that? So uh, interesting question. I'm not skilled to do that. So definitely, I mean, I'm not doing it. There, there's a team always and uh, they go hand in hand. You're absolutely right. So the stylist, ordinarily will have a discussion with the makeup and hair team and kind of discuss what direction we want to take. What is the look we're finally looking at creating? I'll have some references that, you know, I'll share. The hair and makeup team might have some references that they want to, you know, that they feel will work well. It's a collaborative process completely. 
uh, but yes it does it it definitely is a part of it because sometimes uh, you know the finishing touches also are what yeah, bring true. your vision to life and um, it's 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 collaborative and it's also a lot of creative minds coming together so yeah we we always have to discuss that in advance yeah that's very interesting sanjana i never thought you would go this way while i taught you in grade 9 and 10 but it's nice know, to I... hear that <laughs> So we what did you study? What were your subjects in school? What did you go on to college? How did you equip yourself for this career? Uh, so honestly, I have to say that when I was in school, we didn't. I didn't know a career like this existed. In my opinion, it didn't exist. I knew of designers. I knew of people who made clothes, but I had no idea that this was a job that existed somewhere. Um, in the ninth grade, I had commerce with math. uh and then in the 11th and 12th grade i did uh, humanities with math so i had psychology i had math i had english i had political science and i had economics hmm. um honestly great great combination i loved all my subjects a lot having said that i had no idea what i want to do you know when i was like graduating or even at in the 12th grade which i think a lot of people maybe don't oh. um but i think the thing i did was maybe like i just knew i wanted to try i had an open mind i wanted to try out different things and see uh you know i definitely was open to kind of going with the flow and seeing what you know comes my way so i don't think i was super stressed in terms of what the end result was to be honest mm-hmm. uh and i think shriram is like that you know somehow there isn't that there isn't that excessive stress of what are you going to be uh you know it's it is a lot about just you know enjoying that process so and then i i graduated from college and i graduated from school and i joined lsr and uh, i did english honors okay. again no idea what i wanted to do with it um and then i think on, it's only when i started working when i i kind of identified that i was drawn towards the visual arts and fashion overall not even fashion i would say just kind of creatively being in i knew i wanted to do something creative and something to do with you know like uh creatively producing or creatively uh being a part of something that can come to like you know can be put together creatively that's it that's all i knew i just wanted to be part of that process now i didn't know i hadn't figured out exactly what my role would be and i started my uh my first job was at a production house in bombay um because call bang bang films they make ad films and uh i was clear that i wanted to move to bombay because i felt a lot of work in the field that i was interested in is happening there and uh that's when i actually stumbled upon the you know costume department and this art of styling and the fact that you know when you there's an ad film on tv like there is a person who is who is going out there and getting those looks for those people who's ideating and kind of putting together the looks for those characters you know so that was my first kind of insight into styling and um, then i started obviously getting more interested in it and i find kind of figured that what i would like to do is style people you know i would like to kind of help put looks together for people and because uh, that's a good amount of fashion but at the same time like you have to you have to be able to have an understanding of who you're working with you know being able to kind of ideate and uh strategize what works for someone as opposed to what won't work for someone so it was a good blend and luckily for me i think i just got the right opportunity at the right time i have to be honest i don't have a formal education in fashion and uh, i actually didn't even ever intern with anyone or assist anyone in fashion i I wanted to do that but somehow you know it didn't uh, at this point it didn't happen and i managed to start off independently which was um, which was i guess luck to an extent so i would say like obviously having experience and a formal education would have just helped made, made me maybe realize my dream a little quicker you know that's all i would say so when you say formal education if a child today has decided and he knows this is what he wants to do so what do you think he should pursue once he is in school or in college i mean i kind of conclude from the conversation that understanding people psychology may have helped you a little bit there yeah But other than that is there anything else you would recommend for a child who's kind of identified his calling early on 
yeah i think like i said i was someone who had it but mm-hmm. if you have then mm-hmm. i think the beauty is that there's so many more options today in mm-hmm. terms of like exact kind of like there are styling courses and you know if you want to do photography that you can go out there and just like study it you know and at the same time i feel nothing works better than on the job like work learning and working Absolutely. nothing is better than that nothing kind of uh, you know uh, beats that experience especially with jobs like this which are slightly more technical and hands on uh, yeah i do feel like an education can take you that far but essentially getting an internship getting the right work experience under the right people whose work you like and admire is very important um so and also may, you might think that you want to do something and you try try your hand at it and it doesn't work for you so mm-hmm. also the process of elimination is very important i think at this you know when you're younger because uh, i think just having an open mind and trying to try trying out whatever you're interested in also is i think equally important you know not being too stuck in terms of what you uh, what you think is the right option for you because i think when we were growing up at least like there were the few careers you heard of which were the the great careers to you know go after things were different and, uh, yeah There's yeah the most cause so yeah I, i think if you know you want to do it then getting an education in it is very important as well if you do know so besides courses and styling do you think a degree in fashion management or fashion design would have helped them not management i guess fashion design would be helpful uh fashion design yeah i think any like i'm saying because even within fashion there are so many like if you do a course in fashion design there will be so many kind of verticals that you will be exposed to you know within the fashion world and of course it helps you if i understood the technicality of fabric uh you know construction um you know like what works better what uh, what fabrics work better for a certain silhouette if i had learned all that i yeah. think i would have not had to learn all those things while i was working you know i kind of picked these things up on the job that's what happened for me yeah. so it was trial and error and the first two years were a big learning from that perspective just you know figuring out how dyeing works and you know what the turnaround time should be for something like that what's a good quality fabric to use for x or y or whatever you know like just understanding fabrics and construction and design i think it's it's only going to help you no matter what you do you know if this is the field you're interested in yeah. and what are the skills you think a child requires besides uh, creativity so- so i think a good eye is very important you know i think good aesthetic is very important a uh, good and consistent aesthetic you sh- your work should have you know kind of telling like consistent theme or factor to it um i mean the great designers are like that if you look at them you always know when there's there's a certain piece by a certain designer because it might it won't be repetitive but there is a certain element of um, there is a certain consistency to this aesthetic you know um yeah so that's one having said that your eye and your aesthetic is constantly ever evolving so then that's fine that's how it should be i think good observation skills is very important um because you know as a cre- anyone who works in a creative field i think we draw a lot of inspiration from everything around us the tv shows we watch the books we read the places we travel to the people around us so i think observation skills always help you you know sometimes i see like a character wearing the hair in a certain way and i'm like oh we should try that or see a new silhouette on someone walking the streets and i'm like this looks interesting you know like maybe yeah. like move up uh, like try something in that zone or like even social media for that matter there's just so much inspiration it's like a constant mood board you know yeah. um also having yeah, think, like you said that i mean Sorry? having i having that i is extremely essential yeah yeah definitely so i think these are two things and then i mean there are the other things like i feel people skills which is important in every job you know uh you're going to be working in teams you're going to be you know delegating you're going to be maybe in a position where you're working in a team or you're the leader in the team and you should be able to uh you know 
have good people, I think good interpersonal skills take you a long way. Uh, patience, 100% in the job we, I do at least. Time management, very important. Um, and yeah, I think that's, and I think the ability to take feedback is also very important, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think in your industry, it's important anywhere, but here I think it's really more important. Yeah, 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 it is. Uh, also, you did not have any contacts in the industry way back. I think that would have been, what, 2010? But do you think today yeah. contacts in the industry would be a requirement or kids would be able to manage their way around? Look, contacts anywhere help, right, by the end of it. But the thing is that it can only take you that far, I feel. It might get you that first opportunity. But if you're not good at what you do, you're not going to get called again and again and again or you know progress in a field that you've taken decided to be a part of so yeah i i had no i had no contacts to the extent that i i'm telling you i applied endlessly for internships and nothing materialized you know uh so i think a contact can only help you get that first opportunity yeah and yeah. then it's up to so uh i do think that if but that's where having experience, relevant experience is very important. So if I had an education in fashion, mm. my application would have stood out, you know, yeah. in the sea of applications for an internship. I, that's where I was at a disadvantage, I would say that I didn't have that, you know, backing or that kind of like, uh, you know, I didn't have that on my, on my portfolio. So I think that's where I think like equipping yourself with the right skills and the right experience is very important because you can, you know, and now the great thing is like back then we used to try to like, you know, getting those contacts also was difficult. How do we reach these people? Now you can just go online and just drop in an email or a message and you can at least, you know, like sometimes I'm, I, I get, you know, internship requests or like, CVs on Instagram and you know that's literally how accessible it's become yeah. it's so their pros and uh, their cons for sure my, my one last question for a child who's wants to who's vaguely interested but not decided what are the places that he can look at for internships in this area or the firm? okay so I think yeah I got a question uh, I think uh you know, uh, first you should probably, I think the most important thing is to identify whose work you like. Mm. You know, uh, that's very important. Because if you're just doing an internship or, you know, getting experience with someone whose work you don't really admire, who's, who, whose aesthetic you don't really care for, it's not going to be a great learning for you. You know, mm. that's my first thing. The second thing is within styling, like I said, there's so many verticals. There's wedding styling, there's styling for events, like there's celebrity styling, there's styling, you know, costume design, costume styling, where people work on films and ad films. And uh, that's a whole different process and a whole different kind of, you know, uh, like the attention to detail, there's completely different. The approach is completely different. So I think first, identify what you would like to try your hand at. And then kind of reach out to the people whose work you like. Uh, there is a enough experience uh, you know within those verticals but I think identifying whose work you like is very important and reaching out to them trying to get an internship with them would really help great thank you so much Sanjana I learned a lot and I'm sure the children who are going to listen to you are going to learn a lot thank you I'm so yeah. glad thank you thanks a lot